Today, Adidas is a world-famous corporation that generates $22.6 billion a year in sales, has more than 500 factories in 69 countries, and employs 62,285 people. You would have a hard time finding someone who has never worn a pair of Adidas sneakers, or even the equally famous bootleg, Abibas. How did this brand conquer the world and make so much money? Did it happen overnight? We will answer these questions and tell you everything you need to know about Adidas in today's video. The Adidas company was officially founded in 1949, although the history of the company goes back much further than that. In 1898, the third child of a shoemaker and a laundress was born. His name was Rudolf Dassler. Two years later, the family gained one more member. Adolf Dassler was born on November 3rd, 1900. At the time, these events seemed pretty run-of-the-mill, but these two boys would go on to start a revolution in the world of sports shoes and start huge companies such as Adidas and Puma. The Dassler brothers were born in the small Bavarian town of Herzogenaurach, known as the City of Shoemakers. This nickname arose for good reason. At the beginning of the 20th century, the town had at least one shoemaker's workshop for every 30 inhabitants. It's hard to imagine how competitive this market was. The Dassler family was not rich. They always had to find ways to save money as they could barely afford to raise four children. The brothers mastered the art of shoemaking at a young age and started to learn the value of money. To stay afloat, the brothers helped their mother deliver clean laundry and helped their father in the workshop. The family situation got even worse after the First World War. The German Empire fell apart, the economy was in ruin, and it was almost impossible to find work. The boys had no prospects. Their father assured them that they could always make an honest living as shoemakers. Although they would be just another pair of shoemakers in a city of shoemakers, they would be able to put food on the table. However, after the war, there wasn't any work in shoe repair. So the brothers, known to their friends as Addy and Rudy, opened a small business, a shoemaking workshop. In 1920, Adolf took over the management of the newly formed company. Soon his brother Rudolf joined him. They worked out of a small washroom and produced orthopedic shoes and slippers to be used by athletes with disabilities and veterans of war. The business was growing steadily, but it was just one of several hundred ordinary shoemaking workshops in Germany at the time. Some people would be happy with that, but not Adolf. He was keen to grow the company. He was constantly experimenting with new ideas, which were often unsuccessful. But finally, in 1925, he made a breakthrough in the shoemaking business. He created the world's first studded boots. Within a year, this design was already the company's main source of income. The studs were made by ordinary blacksmiths. They soon had enough capital to buy their own factory building, and in 1928, together with Joseph Weitzer, they developed the model of studded boots that would make them famous around the world. Adolf came up with a brilliant marketing strategy. He simply gave a pair of shoes to all of the athletes taking part in the 1936 Olympic Games. The American athlete Jesse Owens won four gold medals and set five world records all while wearing the Dassler Brothers boots. After this, many athletes chose to wear their shoes in competition. Who would have thought that adding studs to a shoe was what it would take to get everyone talking about you? Sales increased, and in 1938, they were able to open a second factory. They were producing thousands of pairs of shoes a day. Then came the Second World War. Now, I have a question. Do you know much about the Nazis? At the very least, you know that they are bad news. And what if I told you that the creators of the beloved brands Adidas were loyal supporters of the Nazi party and stopped making sports shoes to produce boots for the German army? Adolf and Rudolf fully supported the Nazi cause and ideas. They joined Hitler's NSDAP party, thinking that it would be good for business, but they were mistaken. The factories were seized by the state and the brothers were sent to the front. The Nazis even tried to use the shoe factory to produce handheld grenade launch but they were unsuccessful as the factory didn't have the equipment necessary to do this. As a result, Adolf was called back from the front in order to make shoes for the German soldiers. After the war and the defeat of Nazism, the brothers were accused of belonging to the Nazi elite. Rudolf was sent to prison and Adolf had to produce hockey skates for the Americans as a form of reparations. Oddly though, this is what saved the Dassler company from ruin. The US paid for Adolf's work with the decommissioned uniforms of its army, tents, baseball gloves, and other things. In 1946, the company essentially had to start from scratch. Rudolf returned from the prison camp and joined the family business. But the situation after the war was unfavorable. They did not have enough raw materials to make shoes and Germany was practically isolated from the rest of the world. The brothers took a difficult decision. They started making shoes from the remnants of military supplies. They didn't waste anything. Old tires were melted down to make soles 
and workers were paid with raw materials such as firewood and yarn. However, it soon became clear that the brothers had different visions for the future of the company, which led to frequent arguments. After their father died, they divided the company's assets and parted ways under the condition that neither of them would use the family name and branding of the Dassler Company. Two new companies rose from the ashes of the world-famous Dassler Company. Adolf named his company Adidas, as an abbreviation of Adolf Dassler, and Rudolf's company was named Puma. No one knows the reason for the brothers falling out, but we know that after the collapse of the family business, they no longer spoke to each other. Puma and Adidas became fierce rivals in the shoe business. Adolf's company quickly became popular. The entrepreneur invented the company's famous logo in 1949, three white stripes on a shoe. Adolf did not stop there. He looked for ways to branch out and offer a wider range of products. He soon found a partner in the world of sportswear, Willy Soltenreich. The first batch of three-stripe tracksuits flew off the shelves, and the collaboration went so well that from then on, Soltenreich worked exclusively with Adidas. In 1954, Adolf released boots with removable studs. This innovation led the German football team to victory at the World Cup. This was the start of the company's golden years. Sales continued to grow and the company was able to advertise at stadiums during the Olympic Games. Soon an agreement was signed with a Norwegian factory, then Adidas started manufacturing products in France and the United States. By the end of the 1970s they already had 24 factories in 17 countries, and sold more than 200,000 pairs of shoes a day. In 1972 Adidas were the official sponsor of the Olympic Games in Munich, and Germany won the European Football Championship. Two years Years later, the German football team in Adidas boots and shirts won the World Cup for a second time. Adolf's company led the global sporting goods market. Adolf Dassler passed away in 1978 at the age of 77. The management of the company fell into the hands of his wife, Katerina, and six years later to his son, Horace. But with the death of the founder, the company struggled. New and rapid growing companies like Reebok and Nike were breathing down their neck. These companies dominated 50% of the sports shoe market by the end of the 80s. Adidas's share of the market fell to just 3%. After Horace Dassler passed away, the failing company was sold to the Frenchman and football club owner Bernard Tapie. He was not able to bring the company back to its former glory and profitability. The Adidas brand was no longer popular, sales fell, and Tapie soon declared bankruptcy. The new owners of the company were a group of investors, led by the French entrepreneur Robert Dreyfus. He started to reorganize the company. His first move was to move production to developing countries such as China, Indonesia, and Thailand. This allowed the company to save significantly in the price of labor and made Adidas products competitive on the global market. By 1995, the company had doubled their profit. In 1999, they opened offices in Japan and Turkey and gradually developed a chain of retail stores. In 2005, the company was able to buy out all the shares of its main competitor, Reebok, increasing their share in the American sports goods market and catching up to Nike. Adidas remains one of the largest manufacturers of sporting goods in the world to this day. Surprisingly, the company owned only owns two factories. Most of the products are made to order at third-party factories around the world. There are more than 500 factories producing Adidas products, and the company makes an annual profit of over $2 billion. Adidas always works with the best athletes in the world and provides kits for sports teams, from the German national team to Manchester United. It's hard to imagine that such a popular brand almost died out several times throughout its history, that it couldn't compete with its rivals and could not make it through difficult times. Adolf Dassler, a simple Bavarian shoemaker, survived two world wars and managed to turn a small workshop for slippers into a huge corporation known all over the world. His path to success was long and full of challenges. He invented the studded boots that we can't even imagine playing football without today. He was very active, loved sports, and was enthusiastically involved with running the company until his last day. Thanks to him, Adidas is still around today and continues to grow. It is promoted by stars such as Beyonce, Kanye West, Lionel Messi, David Beckham, Pharrell Williams, Muhammad Ali, and Steffi Graf, and it continues to produce iconic shoes. Guys, what are your favorite sports brands? Have your feelings towards Adidas changed after watching this video? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you soon.